So before I get into even all of this, you know, th this is kind of my, my thoughts. We're, we're going we're gonna to dig into this real deep. I don't have as many notes on this. But when it comes to dealing with problems with people just in general, we need to understand what is appropriate. And we talked about this real briefly after service this morning, and there was a good conversation. I, I kind of want to reiterate some of the things that I had said then because they weren't necessarily specifically in my notes. But when you have a problem with someone, and we'll see this play out here soon. The, the one that I really want to deal with the most is the online. Like, wh when is it appropriate? How do you deal with things when you have a problem with someone? Publicly, privately, semi-publicly, right? Because there's instances where the church may need to know about things. And then there's other instances where they don't. We we're talking about this. You know, what if someone's guilty of a 1 Corinthians chapter 5 sin? 1 Corinthians chapter 5 lists off drunkards, extortioners, fornicators, right? All these different things that if someone's called a brother, you know, you're not supposed to even eat with that person. Or we're supposed to put away from among yourselves that wicked person, right? So how public do you get with that? Because there's someone that needs to be put away. Well, we're still they're still considered a brother. They're a brother, someone who's saved. They're not a wolf in sheep's clothing. They're not a false prophet. They're not trying to sow discord. They're just involved with sin. Well, you know what? A brother like that, they don't need to have their sin exposed to the whole world. Right? Now, they do need to be, the church needs to understand, hey, this person is guilty of whatever they've done here, which is why we're going to separate from them. They're not going to be coming to church until they repent. So at some level, the church needs to know, okay, oh, I mean, like, what is he guilty of? But you know what we're not going to do is share every detail, yeah. right? I mean, if someone's guilty of fornication, well, it's fornication. We don't need to go into any specifics, any nitty gritty, oh, they're here with this person or that person or what, you know, like, that's not the point. The point is, this person's found to be in fornication, so this is what we're doing per 1 Corinthians chapter 5. What I don't want to do is just not mention that at all, and you just, oh no, just trust me. They did something that they shouldn't be doing, and you know, that's not right. right. I mean, you, you need, at least need to know why, because then you have someone in church that's, well, I'm friends with that person. What do you mean it's not, you know? No, just, just enough for people to know. But you know what we're not going to do? We're not going to go broadcast that on social media and start putting out video. Oh man, this person did this and that. Why? Because we want them to repent and get right. So the appropriate punishment from God is just, you know what? Shun them. Just shun them. Okay, have nothing to do with them. And that's it. And you don't need to start adding more affliction on top of the shunning and just say, you know what? That is... If the, you know what, if God wanted you to do that, he would have told us to do more. But God is not merciless. He's not unmerciful. He says, nope, this is what you need to do. You separate yourself from them. And you know what, if they repent, you bring them back in. The problem is, is that if you just start going over the top, first of all, it's going to be less likely that a person's going to repent because now they're getting these personal attacks on them. And that, that, that is going to stay with them. You know, when, when the things that you say out of your mouth, whether it's you know, verbally or online, they stay with people. I mean, you all know this is true. Husbands and wives, you know, sometimes you say things, and you got to be real careful with this, because when you say things, you can't take them back. You can't pull that back into your mouth. Once it's out, it's out. And, and the really hurtful things, they stay, and they're going to stay in your memory. And, and you know, it's not going to be for the better. And you're going to need, as a family, to continue to move forward. So one of the ways that you, you guard yourself from having that hurt and that injury is, is watch your mouth. In a similar way, you know, when someone is guilty of a sin and needs to be cast out of church, and we're dealing with that, you don't need to then start throwing the assault on that person that's already been kicked out because... There's no point to that. It's not going to do any good. It's not going to bring any fruit. It's not going to make them repent any faster. And in fact, if you really want that person restored and coming back to church, why would you want to go somewhere? Like, man, this person said this about me. This person said this about me. I don't want to go back there. Even if they do repent and get right with God, because who are they sinning against? They're sinning against God. Those being covetous, you know, being a drunkard, they're sinning against God. They need to get right with God. 
You don't need to add on to that. 